Hi everyone and welcome to the book refuge and welcome to my book review and chat for Credence by Penelope Douglas. I'm not going to keep this picture up the whole time because you've seen it but this book came out on January 14th and it was kind of a surprise to me. I hadn't been a member well I'm on her mailing list but I somehow found out about Credence on Instagram when someone posted a picture of it on their story. And then I was like, I read what it was about. And I was like, I have to have this. And it's coming out in only like four days when I saw it. But there was no place to pre-order it or like able to do any of that because I don't know why. Like apparently Penelope Douglas is like successful enough that she doesn't like need to do the pre-order campaign because people will just buy it. Like, I don't know. I'm not judging her for that. I just was frustrated because I wanted to pre-order it and have it. But I quickly joined one of her Facebook groups and um, it posted at like 5.30 a.m. on Tuesday and I ended up working from home that day and reading the whole thing in like five hours. Um, normally I would read even faster but two things. One, this book is over 400 pages and two, the books of Penelope's that I've loved, like really loved, which is Birthday Girl for the most part, I was sad that I read it too fast. So I really didn't want to speed through this book because I had a feeling it would become a new favorite and I didn't want to hurry because once it's done, you can't put the cat back in the bag. So let's get into my thoughts. I will let you know when we get to spoilers, um, but I'll tell you what this book is about. So this book is about Tiernan, who her parents were these two like famous rich people, um, her mother was an actress. I don't know what her dad did. Well, her dad got cancer and was dying and they commit suicide together while she is home sleeping in her room. And her her mother takes something and her dad takes something and they die together, leaving her an orphan, leaving her with no immediate family that she knows of um, and abandoning her at 17 and just deciding that they cared more for each other than for the future of their daughter is how it feels to her. Tiernan is a very reserved kind of enclosed person. She hasn't felt very loved or seen by her parents ever. They were very obsessed with each other, which is seems romantic, but isn't so great when you're their daughter. And, you know, they live in kind of a harsh world, um, being in the spotlight a lot and... Uh, things like that. And just her life has been kind of frustrating. So she gets a call from her step uncle who, um, as far as I can tell, I think that his, so Jake, the step uncle married, his, his mother married, um, his married her dad's dad. I think, I think that's how it worked. But either way, it's a step uncle. They're not related by blood in any way. He lives um, on a mountain in Colorado with his two sons, Caleb and Noah, who are both like early 20s and she's 17. And um, yeah, so he calls, he says, you know, I've technically been made your legal guardian, but if you want to stay with um, people that you know where you live, that's totally fine, I understand. But he does offer, uh, but he does offer to let her come stay with him. He says it's cold and secluded and we don't get into town very much during the winter. In fact, we're snowed in for about five months of the year, four or five months of the year. But you can come stay with me the 10 weeks until you turn 18. So Tiernan on a whim decides to do it because she doesn't really want to talk with people or deal with the grief well, not that she's not dealing with the grief, but deal with people's questions about why she isn't grieving her parents. And so she decides to go stay. And as the synopsis says, there is a lot of attraction going on, including some interesting sparks between her uncle Jake, step uncle Jake, as well as Noah, the younger brother, and Caleb, the older brother who is selective, not selective, but he's mute, um, chosen mute because of a trauma that he suffered as a child. And he's very animalistic in a lot of ways. He spends a lot of time 
um, cause they live in, in this pretty like big house. They, um, remodel dirt bikes, um, special custom dirt bikes. They do some different things. They have horses and things like that. But Caleb spends a lot of time even at a fishing cabin that is even further in seclusion. And he spends a lot of time there and he's very animalistic when he's there. And when he comes home, it takes him a while to acclimate back to life if he even does. So yeah, there, yeah. I mean, I don't even know what to say. That's the synopsis. That's what it's about. Um, to keep the spoiler free part of this, I really liked it. Uh, I gave this five out of five stars. It is a new favorite. It was very steamy, very sexy. Um, there, wow, how do I even, I mean, you're here for this stuff. I'll get into the like more spoiler deal, but I'll tell you some of the things. There is something with all three of these men not at the same time, but she does engage in intimate situations with all three of these men. Um, don't ask me how the family dinners are when all this is over, because that's an interesting question. But none of it ever felt forced. Uh, <laughs> emotionally, I mean, there are some uh, interesting situations and there are a couple that border on assault to me. Um, I think most of you would agree as well when you read it, but Tiernan isn't afraid to say no and nothing ever really goes past the point of like her word goes in regards to pretty much all of the sexual encounters in this book. So this isn't a case of three men locking this girl in a cabin with them and uh, using her for whatever they want. That's that's not how it goes down. But it is very emotional in the best ways, the way that birthday girl was for me, um, even more so. But it doesn't have the same twisted level that like her Devil's Night series does, which is very hard for me to read actually. And I that series gets very low ratings for me because I feel like it's all salacious. And a lot of the situations that happen to our leading women, I just can't get behind. But Tiernan goes on a journey and it's emotional. And all of the men, the way I described it in my Goodreads review, they all like heal each other in different ways. Um, Jake is holding on to a lot of regrets from his past. Um, he doesn't know how to let anyone in and he's able to see that Tiernan needs a father figure more than she needs like hot age gap sex with him. Um, doesn't mean they maybe don't try at first or get close or whatever, but it's clear what she really needs from him is like the emotional support of an adult who doesn't have any conditions on their love for you. And so that is kind of what I feel like I take from that relationship. Noah, he's more of the fun loving. Um, he obviously is really attracted to her. He wants to be a dirt, dirt bike pro. Um, he keeps threatening to like leave his dad and go somewhere else, but he can never get the courage to do it. And his interactions with Tiernan really help him to kind of like man up in that regards and make a future for himself. And then there's Caleb, who, to me, the stuff that he goes through and the changes he makes are the biggest spoilers, so I'll save those for just a little bit on. But obviously, him and Tiernan coming together really changes both of them in just some, like, crazy ways. Like, it's crazy. Um, but they all uh, have legitimate things where I could have seen her with any of them. And I feel like I maybe have kind of given it away, but I'm going to go to spoilers now. Uh, leave if you really don't want to know any more details about this. I feel like with um, this kind of romance, I mean, there are some spoilers that I'm going to talk about. So leave. Go see it. It's sexy. There aren't a ton of trigger warnings for this, I wouldn't say. I mean, if you're in for, like, Penelope Douglas's other books, this doesn't even touch some of the trigger warnings in those. So I, if that's what you're wanting to know, I think you're good. Um, like I said, there's some dubious consent, but Tiernan's always in control. So 
I wouldn't even consider those like too much. So anyway, all right, getting into spoilers. So going into this book, um, the thing says, it says, um, I can't remember what her tagline was, but she talks about like that there will be something with all three of these men. And like one of them has her, one of them wants her, and one of them is going to keep her. And I wasn't expecting it to be Caleb until probably 60% through because we don't even interact with him much in the first 30%. And then his first interaction with her is he mauls her in a garage while he has a deer blood running down his back. And he straight up is like going in for the kill so to speak before and she wouldn't have stopped him because I mean she was saying stop but we're in her head and we know that she does want it um which is again this is the dubious one that I'm talking about but I just didn't expect it to be him I was really pulling for Jake and then when she has her encounters with Jake it was very clear to me that it wouldn't be him because it literally says like one has her, one wants her, and one's going to keep her. And I was like, well, Jake has her and Noah wants her and he makes the strongest bid in my opinion. But through the growth that Tiernan has, she's able to realize that Noah is just looking for his ticket out of here. And he feels like if he's with Tiernan, he has a reason to go off on his own. He has a reason to get out of here and start a family and go and they can then go live a life together. And she's like, I don't want to be your ticket out of here. And so they have good chemistry. Um, they have sex once um, with Caleb. So here's the thing. There is a night that there's a threesome between Caleb and Noah and, um, and Tiernan. And it's very hot. I don't have any problems with threesomes. Um, but it becomes very clear that like Noah, although he would love, like he wouldn't mind having this relationship with her, it wouldn't be a long-term thing. And the more interactions with Caleb and the things that really frustrated me about him and some parts of Caleb that reminded me of like Damon, which I'm not into from the, from Kit, like I hated Damon. I hated him and I don't understand how he got a happy ever after because he's disgusting to me. Um, is like, he spits on her when he's mad one time. He like steals her things. He, um, we still don't know what happened to her underwear. Although Penelope Douglas says there'll be a short story about that coming out on Valentine's Day. So I'm excited for that. Um, but I understand like once you learn the trauma that his mother got high and left him in the car for four days until his dad found him and he never spoke again, that there's a lot of damage. And although I do believe that because there is that like they separate for a while um, after some drama that they have, Caleb basically tells her to leave. They like, it's not working out. She moves back home. She's going to like go to school. Um, and you know, she's only 18 and he's only 23 and he comes back and he had like opened himself up and he was speaking again and all these things. And that's the part of it. That's a fairy tale because I really think he needs some therapy, not just some girl's magical vagina makes him talk again and makes him functional and all the problems that they had are just fixed. But it is very powerful that they separate and he handles his issues and it's like three months later and then he comes back and is like i worked on this i'm here and i really do appreciate that in stories because i think it's realistic i know lots of couples in my life that they broke up for a time before they realized that that person was the one for them and so i really liked that about it so yeah those are kind of my thoughts like i said though the fact that she has had sex with all three of these men and I mean is later I mean is later married to Caleb and they have a son together and it's like yeah I had sex with grandpa once or twice or actually like grandpa took my virginity was a thing. I mean obviously that's not going to come up at a family dinner but like you know it and so at the end when they're having like all the everybody interact I'm just thinking like this is weird. I don't know, but it's okay. I really, really loved it. 
her writing is so powerful. And I, what I always love is a character of like Tiernan was hurt and she was really secluded and like going through some things because of what her parents had like put her through and not paid attention to her. And like, that's really traumatic. But the fact that she has such a cool like arc and these different sexual experiences like really helped her. And there's a quote in the book where like she says her mother taught her never settle with the first person you sleep with, which I don't agree with. But the way it's shared is that like relationship wise, the first person is lust where you just are at each other all the time and it's really good sex and it's all great. The second person you learn about yourself, you get a little more demanding, you find out what you like and that person helps you learn that. And then the last person is the one that you love because you've learned all these things about yourself and you're ready to go into a relationship with what you want out of it. And now having read the whole book it was pretty obvious like how that was set up because that's what it was with jake is it was less noah was teaching her to be a stronger person and she says no to noah more than she says no to anyone else because she knows that the sex with him like isn't meaning anything but she's learning you know she learned some fun things about herself and then when she's with caleb she knows she's like i'm not gonna be pushed around anymore like we're either in this or we're not and yeah so yeah there was also some unnecessary drama which was just ridiculous I don't feel like this story needed a villain at all um but there is one I mean it's well placed like she sets the seeds the whole time so it's not like it's a surprise it's just that I don't feel like this book needed one a birthday girl didn't need a villain this one didn't need a villain like it was dumb but it was cool. I love the setting. I love kind of like wilderness stories. I like hunting, fishing, horses, ATVs. Like I love that. So that was a great aspect too. The atmosphere was amazing. It was a great book to read in the dead of winter when I'm frozen in my house. So yeah, it was five out of five stars. It was super sexy. This is like five plus on the steam level. Not safe for work. Don't read it around anyone who might look over your shoulder because it's crazy. And pretty much from the time that she first has sex with someone, around like 38%. There's sex in almost every chapter going forward. So there you go. That is my review and spoilers for Credence by Penelope Douglas. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. I put up new videos whenever I feel like it, but for sure on Mondays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. So make sure you subscribe for all the content. Um, have a wonderful day. Bye.